Hello students. Today in this lecture, let us solve some of the problems on forced convection that to flow over the cylinders and sphere. The first problem says, the air stream at 24 degrees centigrade is flowing at 0.4 meter per second across a 100 watt bulb at 130 degree centigrade. So we are taking air stream T infinity 24 degree centigrade, velocity 0.4 meters per second, the bulb, the actual bulb wattage is 100 watts and the wall temperature of the bulb is 130 degree centigrade. If the bulb is approximated by 65 mm diameter of the sphere, so let us see here. So, this is the bulb we considered in incandescent bulb. This bulb is approximated as a sphere. Now, calculate the heat transfer rate and percentage loss of power loss due to convection. So, now get the properties of the air at bulb temperature, it is 134 plus. 130 plus 24 divided by 2, 77 degrees centigrade. At 77 degrees centigrade, go to the properties table, obtain the values of K, mu, Prandtl number, etc. Then, find out the Reynolds number. So, Reynolds number is equal to U infinity into diameter for the sphere we have to take the diameter of the sphere as a characteristic dimension so divided by mu so u infinity is nothing but the velocity 0.4 meters per second multiply by the diameter of the sphere it is 0 0.065 meters divided by mu so we will get the Reynolds number here we are not going to find out whether it is turbulent or Lamina, we are you obtaining the expression for nozzle number over a sphere. That will be equal to 0.37 into Re power 0.6. Before going through this lecture, please go through the lecture made on the most important data used in the data handbook for forced convection. So there I have already said where to take this value, nuzzled number or the where, how to get this expression. So then now let us go to this expression that will be equal to 0.37 into Re per 0.6. So we'll get it as 26.69 as the nuzzled number. But nuzzled number is equal to again h into characteristic length by k. That characteristic length or the characteristic dimension here we are using as diameter. For the flat plate, we are taking is the length of the plate, but for a sphere, we have to take the diameter. So H is obtained as nu into k by d. Nu is 26.69 multiplied by k, the conductivity divided by the diameter. So you get the H as 12.32 watt per meter square Kelvin. Then obtain the rate of heat transfer. Q is equal to H into A into Tw minus T infinity. So here when you go and solve the problems on sphere, don't worry about the, whether it is average or at particular location. Since we are considering the sphere, so directly whatever we get is nothing but the average only. So use the same H we obtained H multiply by the area. See, please make sure you need to find out what is the area of the sphere. So area of the sphere is 4 pi r square. So write 4 pi multiply by r. r is the radius of the sphere and diameter by 2. So this is the area of the sphere multiply by wall temperature minus the air temperature. So you obtain Q that means 17.33 watts of heat is lost by convection. Hence, if you consider the percentage loss, it will be Q loss, that is uh, heat loss due to convection divided by the actual wattage multiplied by 100. So here, uh, actual wattage, bulb wattage is 100, multiplied by 100, Q loss is 17.33 we get. So we see that 17.33% is the heat loss due to convection, percentage error or the percentage of 
power loss due to convection. Now, here in this problem, we are going to use the tube or the air is flowing across a tube at a temperature of 30 degrees centigrade with a velocity of 25 meters per second. The tube would be either a square with a side of 5 centimeter or a circular cylinder of diameter 5 centimeters. So we have two cases. First case we have a tube of 5 centimeter diameter and the second case we have a circular cylinder of diameter 5 centimeter. So we need to compare the rate of heat transfer for each case if the tube surface temperature for both the cases maintained at 124 degrees centigrade. So now again first you need to find the bulk temperature, obtain the properties of the air at the bulk temperature. Then in previous cases we directly use for a flat plate we use the characteristic length as a length of the plate for a sphere we use as the diameter but here for non-circular or for any non-circular or tube kind of thing we need to cal uh, calculate the characteristic length so or the characteristic dimension so that will be obtained by using 4a by p so four times what is the area of the area? It is 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter. So convert into meters, it will be 0.05 into 0.05 divided by the perimeter, wetted perimeter. So how do you find the wetted perimeter? It is nothing but the sum of the sides of this or the flow touching the sides. So it is nothing but the sum of the four sides or four times the each side. So that will be the characteristic dimension. So in Reynolds number and the Nuzzelt number, we need to use this characteristic dimension only, not the exact length or the breadth. So here we get the characteristic dimension as the length of the tube cross-sectional cross-section. So hence Reynolds number will be equal to u infinity into characteristic length by nu. So u infinity is 25 meters multiplied by characteristic dimension is 0 0.05 divided by nu. We get 59,741. So now go to the data handbook, go to the flow over non-circular shapes. So then find the nozzle number as um, if you go to the non-circular shapes, we get the nuzzle number expression as 1.1 into C1 RED power N PR power 0.33. The N and C1 values are obtained for the Reynolds number 15 the range which is having of wherein which lies for this Reynolds number. So then obtain the values of C1 and N and substitute we get as for n and c1 values are obtained and substituted here so c1 value is obtained to be 0 0.092 and the n value obtained to be 0.675 and substitute we get the nuzzle number once we get the nuzzle number calculate the heat transfer coefficient so h is equal to nuzzle number into k by the this d is nothing but the characteristic dimension which is which we got as 0 0.05 and obtain the h value once you get the h value get the then go find out the rate of heat transfer rate of heat transfer is equal to again h into here we use surface area multiply by the difference in the temperatures so h value obtained multiply by surface area that is 4 into 0 0.05 is the diameter multiply by length of the well, or length of the tube. So it is nothing but one. So multiply by wall temperature minus T infinity, we get 1697 watts. The next case, tube of circular cross section. So tube of for circular cross section again find the this tube of circular cross section, characteristic length as 4a by p, 4 times area, cross section area is pi d square by 4 divided by the perimeter. Perimeter is pi into d. 
So pi into d, we get, if we cancel, we get again the diameter as the characteristic dimension. Then for this, find the Reynolds number u infinity to d by nu, u infinity into diameter 0 0.05 by nu, get the Reynolds number. Then for the, from the data handbook, go to flow over cylinders because this is a cylindrical dimensional uh, flow of the cylinders. So for that, obtain the expression for the nuzzle number, nu is equal to c into re power m to pr per 0.33. Then get the values of c and m from the data handbook and substitute, get the nuzzle number. Once you get the nuzzle number, it will be equal to hd by k, where h is again u into k by d. d is nothing but again the characteristic dimension, which is uh, comes to be same as 0.05. <clears throat> so, H is equal to 99.28 watt per meter square Kelvin. Once you get the H, then go to the Q value, substitute. So, again, what is the surface area? Surface area will be equal to pi d <coughs> is the circumference multiply by length of the tube. Length of the tube is per meter length, L we have taken. Pi d is the surface area. <clears throat> so 99.28 into pi into d into tw minus d infinity, you get the rate of heat transfer. Now we are just taking this heat transfer, just getting the ratio. So it is square tube, square tube heat transfer is 1.157 times the circular tube. Next, the last problem is a submarine problem wherein which can be assumed to have a cylindrical shape with rounded nose. Assuming its length to be 50 meter, so length is 50 meter, diameter is 5 meters, determine the total power developed Power, total power required to overcome the boundary friction if it cruises at 8 meters per second. So the velocity is 8 meters per second and velocity of sea water, uh, sorry, uh, in the sea water at 20 degrees centigrade. So we are assuming the sea water to be 20 degrees centigrade. See, so listen here, it is a reverse case here. The water is remaining stagnant and the Submarine is moving at a velocity of 8 meters per second. In the previous cases, the velocity of air was 8 meters per second. But here the submarine is moving at 8 meters per second and surrounding air is, uh, or sorry, surrounding water is stagnant. So the velocity of the submarine is 8 meters per second. So substitute now get the, since it's already given rho value and the new value uh, for the sea water, this temperature is already given, we'll directly take that values, then find the Reynolds number, it is 4 into 10 power of 8, that is the Reynolds number, the submarine is moving in, a, it is in the turbulent region, so which is greater than 5 into 10 power of 5, so that means flow is considered to be turbulent at the end of the submarine, so we need to find the friction since we need to find the total power, we need not find the mu value or h value. We need to find the friction, friction coefficient up to the length L. It is obtained by this expression for the laminar turbulent combined, which we have already used this expression in the, some, one of the previous problems. So CFL is equal to 0 0.074 REL per minus 0 0.2 minus 1742 REL per minus 1. Substitute, get the value of CFL. Once you get the CFL, again same procedure, get the tau, tau is equal to FD by A, FD divided by, please make sure here area, area is not pi d space, the cross-sectional area, area you consider is the surface area and surface area is pi d into L, pi d multiplied by L is the surface area because the friction is occurring between the surface and the sea water. Hence, get the drag force is nothing but tau into area again. Tau is again CFL into half rho u infinity square. This is the same expression which is used in the laminar region. Then multiply by A, pi d into L. Right? So FD is equal to substitute CFL value multiply by half, then the density of the water, then U velocity multiply by pi into diameter into length, we'll get the frictional drag force. So once you get the frag force, yes, and hence 
total power required to overcome the boundary equation so this is only the drag force power required is obtained multi by multiplying by the velocity so it will, will get it in kilowatts you get it somewhere around 290.83 kilowatts as the drag force thank you